Pi. Let us continue with discussion uh, of trade-offs between time and memory complexity and uh, considering sorting algorithm. So um, we discussed with you uh, the counting sort for sorting problem and counting sorting have a very good time complexity if P is very small, where P is a range be, uh, that is difference between maximal, maximal and minimal possible value for sorting values. So uh, we have time complex, linear time complexity if P is very small. And if uh, P is very big, much bigger than N, then uh, we get very bad time complexity and also memory complexity. Okay, we should understand where we should go next uh, because we want to fix these issues with memory and uh, time. Uh, but uh, what we do first? So let's firstly uh, fix issue with memory because it is okay. Time maybe sometimes we can wait, but if we don't have memory on our device, then we cannot uh, run the algorithm at all. So how to reduce the memory? Uh, for reducing memory, we use completely different approach. Let's look to the problem. So we remember that we have n numbers uh, for n numbers. Uh, we assume that they are integer numbers, that it will be not the issue if we have another uh, real numbers. So uh, what is the problem? We want to uh, reorder numbers such that uh, they are uh, next element for each pair, next element bigger than the previous one. So it means that uh, after reordering, the first element that have index zero should be the minimal among all elements that we have. And after that, we can say that uh, element with index one should be minimum among all element from with index from one to n minus one. So all elements except zero element. Second element should be minimum among all elements except zeros and first element. And so on, we can say that the um, n minus second element should be minimum uh, among n minus second and n minus one element. So we can construct the uh, and um, organize our algorithm uh, as um, uh, based on this idea of finding minimum among elements. So what we can do, we can uh, consider all uh, elements from zero to n minus one. It will be it is a position where we uh, put minimal element. And we check all uh, elements with bigger index from i plus one. So we consider, for example, element zeros. Uh, we check all indexes from i plus one to n minus one that are uh, one and so on, n minus one. And look at them and uh, try to understand uh, if this element smaller, uh, the element with index j that we consider now smaller than uh, element with index i, the zeros uh, at the beginning. Uh, if it is smaller, then we just swap them. So reorder, uh, keep the element with value I, a i, put it on the position a j, and to an element that is smaller with index j, put to the position a i. So in that case, we you know, get in the element with index zero. That's after that, check all elements with bigger indexes. And if some of them smaller than element with index zero, we just swap them. In that case, uh, on the uh, zeros position, we get this uh, minimal element among all elements. 
And after that, when i is 1, we don't consider the previous element with index 0 because we start with uh, index i plus 1. And then uh, continue and check all elements with bigger indexes. And if some of them smaller than this one, then we just swap them. So let's look to the time complexity and memory complexity of this solution. We start with memory complexity because it was uh, the main issue that we tried to solve with counting sort. So we can see that there is no additional uh, arrays except the input array. That's why uh, we use only several variables. Uh, and we can say that um, memory is constant or all from one. Memory size is constant. So we use just one, two, three variables. Sometimes because it is inside uh, for loop, sometimes we uh, use this uh, variable. We, um, we get memory for variable, but uh, uh, after some time it is not used uh, outside of this for, for loop, then we use uh, this variable again, damage collector collect them. So uh, we can say that uh, we use just three variables in this code and it is constant size. Don't, it, it doesn't depend on, uh, doesn't depend on size of our, our array that is n. But what about running time, about time complexity? So we can say that the, uh, we have two nested uh, for loops. The uh, outer for loop have n steps anyway, and the inner for loop have at most n steps. So the size, uh, um, number of steps uh, for inner loop depends on i, you can see. And uh, on the first time, it, uh, um, we have n minus one steps. On the second time, it is n minus two steps and so on. But anyway, it is at most n. So we have complexity n times n, that is n squared. But uh, when we do the same analysis for counting sort, uh, it was very rude um, analysis. So uh, it was a very rude estimation. And uh, when we uh, look to the time complexity more careful, uh, we understand that it should be different. Let us look here more careful too. So we can say that the uh, inner for loop have Okay, firstly, we can say that it is n minus two steps. On the second times, it is n minus three steps, then n minus four steps, and so on. So, uh, totally, the total number of steps or, on all um, for all four loops is the sum. Let's look, what is the sum uh, we have? In fact, it is arithmetic series, uh, which sum is just n minus one. That is sum of first element and last element times number of elements over two. So we have this one. And if we open the brackets, then uh, we get such complexity. And the most uh, important sum up here is n square. And we can say that complexity is n square. So here, more careful uh, analysis give us better uh, constant, but anyway, asymptotically, the complexity is the same. So uh, we use additional method uh, that is swap of two elements because it will be very useful to have such method. We use it uh, often in other uh, sorting algorithms. Uh, look to this method, please. In our videos, we uh, assume that we have two uh, elements that are indexes of array A, and we swap uh, elements of this array with these indexes. Not we don't give uh, as a parameter uh, as parameters 
uh, elements itself just indexes because uh, in some languages like Java or others, we cannot uh, use parameters as variables. Uh, that's why uh, swapping of uh, variables inside uh, method uh, is not like swapping uh, values of parameters. That's why we just use these simple syntaxes. So we use this um, code and it is just four lines. Yeah, and uh, it is very beautiful, uh, much shorter than the counting, even counting so. But complexity, time complexity is n square and memory complexity is very good, is constant. And in fact, we don't uh, have any assumption on values of elements that we sort. Uh, only assumption that we need, only the, the restriction that we have is we should compare, we uh, should be able to compare the elements of our array. Otherwise, the, the problem of sorting uh, is meaningless. That's why we just need to uh, compare them. That's why we can sort strings, we can sort double uh, real numbers, we can sort uh, even some instance of classes if we define some comparison procedure. That's why uh, this sorting algorithm much uh, on this point is you, you much better than counting sort. And memory is much better than for counting sort. But what about time complexity? Yeah, here in square, that doesn't depend on P. But here n plus p, and if p less than n square, so if we sort just number less than one, uh, one million, and the no number of uh, so number of these integers uh, are uh, bigger than one thousand, then n square bigger than one million. For, for example, 10,000 elements, 10,000 elements square is uh, 100 million. Uh, that is bigger than P and N plus P will be much less than N square. But if we sort elements that are billion, uh, inter positive integers that are at most billion, then N plus P is smaller, be bigger than N square. And uh, that's why it depends on P, we can compare these uh, counting sorts uh, compare n square and n plus p, which one is smaller? Uh, based on this condition, we can choose uh, sort where, which sorting algorithm is better. So let's continue with other uh, idea for sorting. Uh, selection sort, it was some kind of global order. So globally, zeroth element is smaller than any other uh, so first element smaller than all uh, elements that with bigger indexes and so on. So for understanding the position of element, we should understand what is the global position on uh, among other elements. But what about uh, looking to the local order? Uh, and local order means that if we look to any two elements that are i and uh, with index i and i plus one, uh, and if order is incorrect, we just swap them, yeah? For example, we if we have uh, an array like this, we look to the first elements, they are in correct order, but second and third element are um, in correct order, we swap them, then these two elements uh, in correct order, uh, in right order by 21 and two uh, in, uh, wrong order that we swap them and so on. Uh, and we, if we swap in this way, we can see that bigger element, the biggest, the maximal element uh, is swapping with their neighbor uh, anyway. Uh, and uh, it moves to the end of this array. And we can say uh, that if we look to all pairs from left to right, uh, after one pass, uh, we uh, have the maximum elements on the right place on the biggest one. That's why it's called bubble sort because it is like size of bubbles. And if we have 
for example, love lamp or other um, uh, other things like this, then bubbles with bigger uh, uh, bigger size, um, larger uh, bubbles uh, go to the uh, up faster than uh, other uh, other bubbles. Here the same thing. Um, the maximal element uh, comes to the end of the array very fast, and it uh, it is uh, on the right place as uh, after first pass. Uh, then we so we can see that uh, after first pass we have better order, but it's still not the correct order. Uh, that's why we pass again, and after the second pass we can say that the second. Uh, largest element uh, on the also on uh, the right place after third pass we can say that third largest largest element on the right place and so on so so it is like love lamp so uh, um, in that uh, that's why on the second pass we, we can uh, consider on the part of array that is smaller to to one yeah the size is smaller than one uh, to one than n n minus one elements then uh, after next step uh, only n minus two elements n minus one elements and so on so that's why we can uh, decrease the size of sorting uh, part and i will be uh, here i is the size of um, sorting part it is the right uh, border for our sorting part so here and we um, run, uh, we go with indexes from zero to i. And if we have two neighbors that are in correct order, we just swap them. So here we use the same function swap as in the previous case. So here we also can say that memory complexity is constant, like for selection sort. Uh, we don't use any additional um, arrays. But also time complexity is n square because we have uh, for inner uh, loop the first time it is n minus two steps, then n minus three steps, then n minus four steps, and so on until we have just one step. It is some the it is the, also some of arithmetical series. That's why we get uh, the same complexity n square as for selection sort. But here we can say that if there is no swapping uh, on some passes, then we shouldn't continue this sorting process because it is already in correct order. So we can add this thing. Uh, if it is swapped, swapped, then we continue. But if it is not swapped, the no swapping process uh, at all, then we break and stop. That's why we can say that if uh, array is already sorted or almost sorted, we can do only one pass or constant number of passes and obtain sorted uh, array just in constant time. Uh, so not constant time, but linear time. We cannot do it in constant time, but we can do it in linear time. And in the best case, it is the best case of our solution. We have very fast um, sorting process. Uh, in fact, it depends on data, and uh, if we know these condition data that it is already sorted or almost sorted, we can just use this bubble sort. But if we don't have such condition in uh, worst case, in general case, uh, in average case, we have n squared as a complexity. So, but uh, here we see that local order give us global order. But for selection sort, we uh, we initially look to the global order. So we have three sorting uh, algorithms. Uh, first one is counting sort, that can be linear or very slow. Uh, selection sort and bubble sort that can that is n square but doesn't uh, use uh, memory at all. And for bubble sort comparing to counting sort, the complexity is similar as a comparing selection sort and counting sort. 
And also there's restrictions here for bubble sort of just comparison elements. Okay, in next video, we look to uh, other ideas and other sort of elements that uh, give us some improvement here. Here we can say that we pay, we give uh, time for memory in so somehow, but uh, in case of P is um, not very big, uh, we have constant memory, but have bigger and square uh, time complexity. Okay, see you in next video and we'll consider another approaches.